Welcome to the Idea Talks, where we discuss big ideas. The Idea Talks is a bi weekly podcast with Josh Tice and other leaders on big ideas for life, leadership, and ministry. And I'm your co host, Drew Polinencia, and we are glad you're here. For more information on this podcast, visit ideanetwork.church. Today's big idea is all about going viral with the gospel on social media. Hey, I know you're on social media, but do you use it correctly? <laughs> To advance the kingdom of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ, today we're joined by Dan Bergman. Hey man, this is the part of the episode where we're supposed to advertise my book. All right. So what do you think we should say? I don't feel bad about it. It's not a shameless plug. It's literally your book. You've put a lot of work into it. That's a good point. So you need to pick up a copy. And hey, here's the thing. Here's the thing. If you buy a copy and you didn't like it, right. Drew said he'll pay it, pay for you to ship it back. It's not what I said. At least an In-N-Out burger. I'll ship it to them. You'll ship them. If it's in, on the East Coast, I'll be all spoiled, but it's fine. <laughs> hey, I'm in this book too. You are. You're actually in this book, and I, I say some things that people don't know about you. It's going to be great. It's I, I tell some stories. All right. <laughs> are you? Where book? can people find this book at? Oh, that's right. And what you it's can called? Find, okay, so you can pick up this book. Right. It's called The Quest for Friendship. The Quest for Friendship. Insert Galliant's music here. <laughs> that, really that, what, that, yeah, that really is what. That really is what it is. Right. It's happening right now. It's going to be. The Idea Network publishing arm of our network has produced this awesome uh, resource, and I really do appreciate it. It's exciting. It really is a discussion of friendship, and I want you to pick up a copy at ideanetwork.church in the shop tab. It's the very first resource at the very top. You can pick it up, and 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 if you put in the promo code free shipping, free shipping is yours. All right. Yeah. There it is. Go do it now. The Quest for Friendship. Welcome to this edition of the Idea Talks. We are so happy you stopped to join us. Today's Idea Talks is going to be a session from our most recent Idea Summit in 2021 by a gentleman named of Dan Bergman. In 2020, Dan began posting short gospel videos on TikTok and Instagram. His videos have had over 4 million views, and he's seen hundreds of professions of faith in Christ. This is now his full-time Christian ministry. In this session, he goes into depths not only of the platforms that he uses, but also the tools that you too can use to get out the gospel to the people that are around you. His session description for this specific session is learn how to go viral with the gospel on social media. Find ways to use digital evangelism as an evangelist, missionary, pastor, or layperson. Discover amazing organic growth as you reach people with the gospel. And Dan shares his heart just on that topic. There are many specific stories that he shares of specific people reaching out as a result of a video he posted, whether it was 10 seconds or 13 minutes, and how they trusted Christ as their Savior. We can't wait to share this episode with you. Stay tuned for more. Okay, so digital evangelism through, th- digital evangelism through social media, I want to be able to share with you my story and how you can duplicate the same type of amazing outreach through social media. billion people use social media. Now, when I'm here telling you all these things, I'm preaching to the choir because you guys are already interested in doing this. You're here for a reason, but I want this to really hit home, okay? 3.48 billion people use social media. One out of every two people on the planet use social media apps. So when we talk about like reaching people with the gospel, I want to be able to share with you these facts that might convince a skeptic that we need to get on this. This is where people are. By 2025, three out of every four people, oh, got some more chairs, all right. Three out of every four people on the planet, okay? So if you have four people, four random people from everywhere on earth, By 2025, three out of those four are going to have a smartphone. How better to reach people with the gospel? We had this amazing opportunity. The average U.S. adult spends an average of two hours and 55 minutes on their phone every day. You guys get those like screen time notifications? Like just when you're on your way to church or or something? They tend to do it on Sundays for me. Um... How many of you are like way ahead of that curve? You're like the crazy person that spends like five hours a day on your screen time. Yeah, okay. So um, when I started doing this, it was like through the roof. Um, But before I started doing this, yeah, I was right in that, you know, three hour time frame. 
the majority of those three hours are spent on social media. All right, I'm going to tell you something crazy if you never heard this before. The average person touches their phone an average of 2,716 times per day. How many of you, if you like set your phone on the, de- the, de- the desk or the table in front of you, and you just kind of like, just touch it? Or it's in your pocket, and you're like, okay, you know, and it, it's just a reflex. Now, um, take that to the skeptic person that might say, if it's not physical evangelism, I don't want to do it. Um, we're missionaries, by the way. We're supported 100%. The 100% of the support that we get is from churches and individuals. We have churches that, after we made this transition, are kind of like, I don't know about that, Dan. I really like talking to people in person. I like engaging people face-to-face, as if sharing the gospel through texting or video messaging is not the gospel. Imagine this, for that skeptic, okay? Imagine if people stood by their door three hours every day, touching the doorknob 2,716 times. How stupid would we be not to engage in door-to-door ministry because the person's right there touching that doorknob 2,716 times per day. That's what we have with social media. So here's my digital evangelism story. Um, It starts with this guy. Will you stand up, Joe? Okay, this is Joe Henkel. I just met him in person in like real life. Um, Was it yesterday? Everything's kind of flying together for me. Sunday. Sunday, okay, Sunday. But I knew him through social media, through Facebook, a long time before that. In January, he posted something about how people can use TikTok to reach people with the gospel. And I didn't even even know Joe. I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll give this a try. Things started to happen. I posted a video, and by the way, up until January of this year, like this month, I had been involved in Jewish ministry, reaching Jewish people with the gospel for the last 10 years. And in January of 2020, I started this kind of as a side thing, just kind of an experiment, and it started blowing up. So, like, less than a month after posting my first post on TikTok, I had a video go viral. As to this day, I think it's had 356,000 views, okay? And this video was entitled, Jesus Was an Israeli. I got a lot of angry people, okay? I think there's like 17,000 comments, most of which are angry. Some of them are in Arabic. And I started to get afraid. Like, God, are these people going to find my house? What am I going to do, you know? And I hid, I, I, hid, I hid that video. I made it private, not public, um, when it had like 70,000 views. And I started to realize that I was taking the light of the gospel and sticking it under a bushel. I was letting fear dictate what I would do to get the gospel out there. And you're gonna get backlash, you're gonna get haters, you're gonna get comments from Christians, people that call themselves Christians anyway, that disagree that the gospel's by grace alone through faith alone. Um, Some of the meanest comments I've ever gotten were from Christians. I've had Jewish people say that I'm doing the work of Satan, that I'm worse than Hitler because I'm killing people's souls. Um, And you're going to get that kind of stuff. It comes with the territory. But what I'm doing and what you can do, you know how Jesus said, take your net and put it on the other side, you know, go ahead and give it a try? That's what I did. And social media is just like using a big net. We're fishers of men, right? What better way to catch people um, than where they're at? So that was my my, my, my first post that went viral. And I put it back on, and now it's had many, many, many more views. In June... I did my first, June of 2020, I did my first gospel video. I've been doing a lot of them, but my first one that elicited a response, okay? Comment on this if you trusted Jesus as your Savior as a response to this video. That was in June. Um, That video, I've had over, again, over 17,000 comments of people responding in one way or another to the invitation that I had given. Now, that was like, what in the world is going on? Um, let, me, let, me, let me go ahead and fast forward a little bit. Um, let me get into the meat of what's going on here, okay? So I, I started a TikTok account in January of 2020. In less than a year, I've had almost 4 million views. 
Okay, right now it's over four million views total between Instagram and TikTok. Over 20,000 responses to invitations in one way or another. And you don't know where these people are coming from. And so that's why I transitioned to a more um, specific way to understand their response. I've had over 300 people since January of 2020 reach out to me and say, hey, I turned from my sin and trusted Jesus as my savior because of your video. I'm a nobody, okay? I'm like half Polish, half Irish, half Jewish, half Gentile, nobody from Chesterland, Ohio. And God is doing this, okay? He can do the exact same thing through each and every one of you. And I just want to show you this amazing opportunity uh, that God has, has given. You can do this too. This is a message that I got from somebody after I shared the gospel with them. I shared a 13-minute YouTube video that I created, and I'll talk about that in a little bit, um, to thoroughly give them the gospel. Because one minute on, on, on TikTok or 30 seconds on Instagram Reels is just enough to kind of, can I tell you more, you know, to get their attention, to hook them in. And so I started asking people to message me if you want to know more about Jesus, if you want to know for sure that you're going to heaven if you want to know how to be saved. This is one such response. It was a very powerful message. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Um, just, just today, just today, 5.30 this morning, I got this email. This is a comment on my YouTube video of somebody accepting Jesus as their Savior this morning because of social media. I don't even know where this person is from but we can make an impact with the gospel. And because of the way that social media is structured, I can get in touch with that person. I can follow up. I can disciple. I can get them plugged into a good church, wherever it is that they're at. And one of the things that's amazing about the Idea Network and the Facebook group is that you can ask, does anybody know a missionary in London, England, or Albuquerque, New Mexico, or wherever it is? We have an amazing opportunity to do this and you can keep in touch with that person. You can follow up with that person. Um, you can build a relationship with that person and get them into a good church where they can be uh, further discipled. Understanding the networks. Okay. So algorithms and hashtags. Every single social network has its own algorithm, meaning how it is that a post or a video ends up going viral. One of the things that's amazing about TikTok and Instagram is trying to kind of duplicate that now with Instagram Reels. When you post something on Facebook, nobody really sees it except for your friends and people that follow you, right, for the most part. I mean, you could put a hashtag in there and somebody that's searching for hashtag for, you know, cute nursery, whatever, they might see something. Or if you do it public, people can share it and it might get like a couple, maybe a couple dozen more views. But on TikTok, when you post something, it gets pushed out to a small, random group of people. If that small, random group of people likes or comments, okay, and I've had people get in fights in the comment section that disagree with me, but because they're interacting with it, okay, it's garnering attention in TikTok, okay, the algorithm, the computer system that determines if stuff goes viral, they say, all right, let's push it out to a medium group meaning the first group might be 200 people. If those 200 people interact with it, they'll push it out to 500, to 1,000, okay? I've had one post go over a million, and that's because people interacted with it, okay? There was some end time stuff that I talked about. Depending on which camp you come from, okay, you might disagree. Um, I'm a pre-trib guy. Um, so a lot of people, <laughs> I got one pre-trib guy in here. So, uh, a lot of people were disagreeing with me, arguing, you know, and, 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 and it just, it snowballed. And TikTok is like, hey, we need to put this in front of more people because it's getting longer and more attention on our app. And I've been told that there's actually a guy in like the TikTok factory that sits in front of a computer, monitors videos, and says, okay, this one is going to go super viral, meaning like a million or something. And um, it happens. Anyway, it's just up to how things work. You have a chance to get the gospel in front of thousands and thousands and thousands of random people. 
For instance, on Instagram, okay? On Instagram, before I started doing this, I had like 200 followers. And they were like mutual followers. They were my friends, the people that I knew. Um, after a while of doing this, it's up to like 2,000 now. But what I want to tell you about that is, in Instagram, you can look and see how many people you've reached, how many individual accounts have been affected or seen your stuff. In the last 28 days, even though I have 2,000 followers, in the last 28 days, my videos have reached 46,000 accounts on Instagram Reels, which is like TikTok. I'll talk about that in a little bit. But the algorithms allow you to get in front of random people that otherwise wouldn't see your stuff. I've had people on, on, on TikTok say, why is this on my For You page? Why, are, why am I seeing this gospel thing? I'm an atheist. And I can respond to that person with the gospel. I can sow the seed of the gospel. Many of them never, ever respond, but I sowed the seed in love. And that's, that's the amazing thing. Hashtags are, are, are vital, okay? When you put a hashtag on a post... It helps people that might be looking for that thing or searching for that thing. Um, people are searching for hope, especially through COVID. Okay, people, I, I mean, I've done posts about life and death. I've done posts about depression. I've done posts about heaven and hell. I've done posts about just, you name it, whatever it is. And if you're a pastor, if you're trying to reach your area locally, you can do it by using hashtags, okay? Where I'm from in North Carolina, people will put a hashtag, NC check, or North Carolina, or Raleigh. And the people that TikTok is going to push out to in that small batch are people that are likely to interact with that local hashtag. Okay? And so you can, you can change things up. There's also differing visual aesthetics, meaning um, on Instagram, everything, people like to have it polished. People have it to, to, to look really nice, you know, like a good, clear picture um, on, on, on TikTok, it kind of tries to break that mold. Um, like Carrie was saying about like the different types of art, you know, I don't care about all of this stuff, what you say is art, I'm going to take this snow shovel and hang it in the corner. And TikTok is kind of like the messier it is sometimes, um, the crazier it is, sometimes those, those are the ones that'll, that'll skyrocket. But anyway, also timing your posts. Um, trying to time your posts that you do um, at, at an hour that people would be on it, okay? And on TikTok, you can see when people are on it that, it, for instance, okay, if you're trying to reach people locally, if you're a pastor, you want to reach people in your time zone, maybe at a, at a, at a time that they're going to be on it, maybe like after dinner time or after people get home from work, um, posting at like 10 a.m. on a certain day might not be the best when you're trying to reach people locally where you are. Um, but there's analytics that you can find out where people are uh, and, and when they're on it. And um, if you want to know more about that, send me an email and I'll send you a chart that has like worldwide the best times for TikTok um, and Instagram. Okay. I got to go quickly. All right. So on Instagram, there's uh, three main kind of posts and I'm by no means an expert on any of this stuff. Like I'm, I, I'm a newbie, okay, to a lot of this stuff. Normal posts on Instagram, which mainly was focused on like photos, okay, there's a lot of photography on there, but you can also do video. When you do an Instagram normal post, it has to be a minute or less to be a normal post. If it goes beyond the one minute, it becomes classified as IGTV, Instagram TV. And you can go up to like, I don't know, like an hour or more with those. The nice thing about IGTV videos, if you, if you want to explain something longer than just a minute, you can do an IGTV video, and then when you're talking to people and messaging in response to your videos, you can say, hey, I have an IGTV video that I did on this. Can I share it with you? Can I send it to you? You can build a library of your own stuff describing issues for discipleship, for salvation, whatever it might be, and you can send those videos to those people privately in, in messaging on Instagram. Reels is the new thing. Uh, the Instagram started when TikTok was looking like it was going to be banned. I don't know if it's going to be or not, but Reels, Instagram Reels, tries to do the same type of algorithm as TikTok to make stuff just go viral to random people uh, in the same way. But Reels has to be 30 seconds or less, okay? That's the main difference. Um, TikTok, the For You page is like your newsfeed in Facebook, okay? And it's things that TikTok says they think you will like. So they send random stuff to you. 
That's where your posts are going to show up in front of atheists, in front of whoever. Random people that don't necessarily want to see your stuff, or people that are local that might like your hashtag about being in North Carolina. Um, that's where they're going to see that. All right, so you can comment, you can duet. Boy, I'm realizing that I should have left some of this stuff out. Um, you can comment uh, on posts. You can do it, meaning you can like have somebody else's video that you're reacting to side by side, okay? And you can also save posts. People ask me all the time, how can I save your post, make it so I can save it, or you know, stuff like that, because they want to take it home with them, they want to share it with somebody else in person. This last feature, Stitch, is where you can take a segment of somebody's post and you can tag it onto the end or the beginning of your post. Um, people like to do that to argue with people, to make fun of people, or sometimes to try and go viral because they're going on somebody else's coattails. All right, let me go real quick with this. YouTube, the number two search engine in the world, the number one is Google, okay? But YouTube is a search engine. It's very, very widely used, and you can easily create things on YouTube to be able to share with other people on other platforms. I use TikTok and Instagram Reels to get that hook, to get that in, um, first interaction with somebody. And I will use a YouTube video, I have a 13 minute gospel video, to really flush things out, to be able to show them the gospel thoroughly. Um, and that's, that's kind of my um, methodology there. I like to message people. I started a video, I started to do in September of last year. Because I was getting so much response and not knowing what to do with it, how to keep track of all these people, I would do a short video on TikTok or Reels, and I would say, message me if you want to know more. And it's, it's so much better. I like Instagram because Instagram allows you to send links in messages. TikTok, you cannot do that. TikTok, if you put www.whatever in the messaging, it does not transform into a clickable link. On Instagram, it does. Instagram also has video chat, which I've been able to utilize at times as well. Um, plus, I don't know what's going to happen to TikTok, but Instagram uh, is, is a good place to go. All right, moving along very quickly. Creative ideas. Start with a story or a question. You want to get people's attention immediately. How many of you, after Carrie prayed and he started his opening illustration, it was like, like you're sucked in, okay? That's what you want to do with your videos. You don't want to start by, let me tell you about Jesus. Let me tell you what he, you know, I mean, you want to be able to give the gospel, but with these videos, somebody's going to scroll right past it if something doesn't stop their scroll. You want to stop the scroll. If it's something just crazy to get their attention, like I did one where I got hit by a car, um, whatever you got to do to get them to listen more than three seconds, and if it's something where they will continue to listen, one of the things that I've done, this is an extra pointer, um, I've done videos like top three or top five things that you need to know about Jesus, top five things you need to know about heaven, um, and I count backwards. So they want to know, they want to stick around to see what number one is, okay? Um, that's helpful as well. Start with a story or question, give a biblical truth, and end with a challenge or an application. This video that I did, I'm going to show you, this is Instagram Reels. This is back when Instagram only allowed 15 seconds for a reel. This has had 89,000 views. Um, here's the video. Did you know that you can be religious and not right with God? The Bible says that all of our righteousness is filthy rags in God's sight. What we need is a relationship, and that's through faith in what Jesus did for you. And then I have this thing that says, DM me with any questions you might have about Jesus. I had a girl named Saumya in India. She saw this video. And she says, does Jesus love the people who are not Christians? I told her Jesus loves everybody. And he died for everybody. But his death will only be effective. His payment for the sins of the world will only be effective to those who receive him as their savior. And then I sent her my 13-minute YouTube video. And at the end of the YouTube video, I go through a prayer, but I, say, I, I make this abundantly clear. I say, this prayer does not save you. What saves you is the belief, the turning from your sin, being sorry for your sin, and believing in your heart that Jesus died and rose again for you. And I said, I'm going to show you what a prayer like that might look like, but the prayer does not save you. you can, it's not an abracadabra. It's not a magic thing. But this is how it might look like to do that, but the belief is what saves you. I sent her the video. 
She responded, I watched the video and I loved it. And I said, did you just trust Jesus as your savior? And she says, yes, I did. And she is, she had a picture, she, she, she was Hindu, okay? She had a picture of her wearing something like I Dream of Jeannie, you know, for her profile picture. Um, a couple months ago, she changed it to a picture of her with Jesus. And she's just, her life has changed. She messaged me, up and she said that she, she said she wanted to pray for me, and she wanted to thank the Lord that we met because I was the one that showed her that God loved her. If that's all that ever happens through all of this, forget about the amount of people, okay? One girl in India accepted the Lord because I was willing to use this tool. And I'm a nobody. I'm just a channel, okay? Um, I get in the way of God more than I'm used by Him. But we have an opportunity. Okay, quickly moving along. These are some responses from that video. Messages that I got, private messages that I got. I want to go to heaven. Hey, so I just watched one of your videos. At the end of it, it said to DM if I need help with my relationship with God, I, and I do, so please help me. Um, messages come pouring in. Uh, here's another one. Hello, I saw your story about how you can be righteous with, uh, without a relationship with God. Uh, can you please give me some advice on how I can start a relationship with God and, and, and Jesus? And people are searching, and they'll just open up to you because it's like anonymous. You're just somebody on social media. Um, creative ideas. Um, you can ask about your posts. Is it original? Is it savable or shareworthy? Okay, is this something that's going to be like what they call evergreen content? You know, something that's going to be something that people will want to share with somebody else. Um, and then lastly, is it attention grabbing? Here's another one that I did um, on Instagram Reels uh, on a scale from 1 to 10. On a scale from 1 to 10, how sure are you that if you were to die right now, that you would go to heaven? The Bible says you can know. In 1 John it says, These things have been written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. So I ended it with, message me if you want to make it an 11 out of 10. I had a friend that said that. Instead of saying, you know, are you sure you go to heaven or not? Instead, you put a number with it. And I was getting people saying, well, six, or seven, or three, or two, or zero. Um, I got messages because of this video. I want to be in heaven 100%. How do I do it? Like, what do I do? Hey, man, I saw your post. I wanted to be 11 out of 10 that I'm going to have eternal life. Hey, I saw your video. I'd like to know how I can know 11 out of 11. If I die right now, I'll be saved and go to heaven. And people, I mean, there's kids, there's adults. I've had Satan worshipers reply. I've had Muslims, Jewish people, um, Catholics, okay? Um, all kinds of people. So practical ideas. How I make a video. How I follow up with decisions, minimal equipment needed. Okay, so um, how I make a video in both of these apps, Reels and TikTok. You can record within the app. I don't like to do that. I like to take my phone or my camera and I'll record first. That way I can do however many takes I want. I can, I can edit it. I can trim it. I can add text, okay, if you have editing software. iMovie's great. Um, and then I upload it, okay? Instead of recording within the app, that's what I do. Um, how I follow up with decisions. I have a numbers spreadsheet or an Excel spreadsheet. I keep track of every single person and I make sure that I follow up with them through messages. And if they accept Jesus as their savior, I will document that. Every single person, their username and their you know, name if they have it on their profile so that I can follow up with them. Um, I made a website for follow-up called newtojesus.com. That's on your resources there at the bottom. Because I wanted to have a website where people could go as brand new believers and find out foundational things about the Christian life without being, uh, you know, connected with some local church off somewhere that they're not going to have anything to do with. I wanted to be able to reach people all over the world with the same website that was specifically for that purpose and also have a contact follow-up form to get them into a good church. Um, so that's how I follow up with, with decisions. Um, minimal equipment needed, a smartphone, and that's it. Okay? If you got a smartphone, that's all you need. Um, practical ideas. Why I love Apple. I'm, I'm an Apple fanboy, okay? Yeah, <laughs> preach it, yeah. Um, and it, it becomes really practical, okay? Airdrop. Just being able um, to record a video, to edit it, and then to send it by Bluetooth to my phone um, is, is vital for my workflow.
universal clipboard. I didn't even know this until like I did it by accident once. <laughs> that you can copy and, and paste text from your computer or your iPad. And so like I have things that are written out. I have in a notes file probably 25 dedicated responses to specific questions because I was getting so many responses, I typed them out. And so I would send somebody a response. Did you get to watch the video yet? If they did get to watch the video, I would say, did you trust Jesus as your Savior like I talked about in the video? Um, if somebody says that they did trust Jesus as their Savior, I have a response to that. And so Universal Clipboard is great. Um, iMovie is great. Final Cut Pro is great. And if you, if you buy into the Apple system, iMovie is free. Um, and it's really helpful. But anyway, those are just some of my points of view. Um, stuff I'd recommend, a good DSLR. Okay, you can get a good uh, camera. Mine here. Um, I got used at a used camera shop for like 200 bucks. And the nice thing about this is it has a flip out screen. And both of these formats on, on, on Reels and TikTok, you're doing portrait mode. Okay? And so you want to be able to see what you're doing. Um, and it's really helpful. Um, a good uh, powered lapel, lapel mic. Um, doesn't it, it doesn't have to be powered if it's plugged into the, in, into the phone or a shotgun microphone. All of this stuff is in your notes. Uh, a good tripod. A good tripod is great because you want to be able to have that camera not shaky, uh, have it stationary. And then some lighting ideas. Um, I'm running out of time here, <laughs> but uh, lighting, is, lighting is good. Lighting is very important. Don't over um, underestimate lighting. You want to be well lit. And natural light just by a window, okay, is great because that natural light, um, people like to see that you're well lit. Using uh, social media as a, a missionary or evangelist, reach the world for Christ, use the Idea Network Facebook group uh, to get new believers plugged into a good church near them, good follow-up resource, newtojesus.com. As a pastor, local hashtags like I mentioned before, where you're at, mention your city, um, integrate your church into your videos. You can do that, and it's very effective, and you can have people show up at your church because they saw some posts that you did. Um, point those with questions to your sermons online. Like I said, you want to build a resource library that you can, you can send them those things. If you already preach sermons on those things and you have them on YouTube, you can go ahead and send that link to that person um, through messaging. And then here's some of the resources. Um, you saw that like stock video that I had um, in both of those shots, okay, both of those um, things. That was from storyblocks.com. Storyblocks.com is, I think, like 100 bucks a year. And you have unlimited downloads, unlimited access to great footage. Um, check that out. Um, Audio.com with two eyes. They have a lifetime membership of royalty-free music. Lifetime. You pay once. You have it for life. I think it was like 200 bucks, like 199 um, and then Think Media on YouTube. Those statistics I gave you at the beginning were from Think Media. Um, Sean Cannell, Joe knows about him. Joe's talked to him. Um, he's a Christian. He's a believer. He's here in Vegas. And he's got some great ideas to help you with lighting, with equipment, all of that stuff that I didn't have time to, to talk about. Um, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and open it up for questions, comments, discussion, um, anything. Yes, sir. Additional onboarding with like getting into like promotions and paid that nature, like how much of that is any did you need to do to just kind of get out there or is it just straight viral from I'm I'm an absolute cheapskate zero. Okay. Yep, yep. None of that none of that was paid or, or, or promotion driven. The only money that I paid was for those resources for the stock video and the audio. Um, people will like original sound. If you have original sound, sometimes it like kind of gets their attention because it's not everything that they've been hearing uh, as well. Yes? Maybe question for someone who doesn't use TikTok that often. Sure. When you post on TikTok, it goes to, every post goes to random people, not followers. Is that correct? Both. So if they're a follower of yours, they'll see your posts in, 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 in their, um, there's two sections, okay, on your TikTok news feed, so to speak. There's the For You page, which is what TikTok randomly feeds you, what they su su assume that you would interact with. And then there's your followers, those that you follow. So people that follow you will see your stuff if they go to that follower side of it. Gotcha. Um, but also random people, yeah. Okay. What, um, what kind of time commitment are you, what would you say? Like, we got a small church, I'm the only staff member. Sure. 
uh, be able to do this successfully? What kind of, what the time Sure. Okay. So when I first started this, like we've been with Jewish ministry for the last 10 years, and I was sitting at a desk in an office for our, for our mission board, and I was wanting to do this, and I felt like I couldn't be on my phone all the time. And our director came to me, and he said, you can't do this all the time. You've got to have somebody else to, to help you with that. And that was like the light bulb moment. I felt, I felt like I was Jonah on, a way to, on my way to Tarshish. Like, I need to get on this. This is what God really wants me to do. Um, before that, I would just get up there in the morning, and I would spend maybe 20 minutes, okay, um, recording, editing, and posting. Now, you can add text within TikTok. You can add text within Instagram Reels. You don't need a computer. You don't need editing software. Just your smartphone, you can do all that. Um, there's planning that goes into it. Um, I've had videos that I've spent eight hours, 10 hours, 12 hours on a one-minute video that has not done well, okay? Um, and I've had other ones that I recorded, like, on the phone in, like, 30 seconds, maybe, you know, 10 minutes to edit it on the phone, post it, and it's, it's blown up. So it's kind of hard to, hard, hard to figure out. Now, responding to people, um, having time to reply to the messages, that's where a lot of the time is, is, is spent. Just starting out, posting once a day. Just get a post out there. I know Sean Cannell, he likes to say, punch fear in the face and just press record. You know, that's what you got to do. Um, the nice thing about social media and this kind of thing is it's flexible to your schedule. If you only have 20 minutes, you can do it in 20 minutes. If you have three hours, you can do it in that time frame. Does that answer your question or not at all? <laughs> okay. Um, I am a, the pastor's wife, mother of five, not on staff. I run our page. We have over a thousand people. I don't know. There are so many other social media platforms. Yes. You could get overwhelmed by trying to do them all. There yep. are people now who are leaving to go to more you know, conservative platforms. Yep. There are people who are staying. Um, and sometimes they're both mean about it. But <laughs> anyway, do you just get really good at... Because we're only on Facebook right now. Yeah. I don't, I'm not paid to spend my whole day going on all Doing all platforms. that stuff, yeah. Would you just say be really good at one? Or would you just say start to understand that you should go to TikTok? Well, there's different. Like yeah, there's differing opinions about that. Did you have an answer for her? Kind of in a question. At sure. The same time. Okay. Well, let's have a conversation. Would you say that Instagram, TikTok, any of these in which the output goes almost universally, would be a much better evangelism tool than yes. a communication tool for your people? Yes. Like, like I, like I have Facebook. We use Facebook. That's how we interact with our. Community. Same here, same here. And that would be more to drive outside of your area to actually do, I want to go soul winning in a new show. Yes, yes. That's what my opinion is. What I would say about your question, um, what I do, oftentimes I'll do one video. I'll post it on both. Okay? And so it's like getting two birds with one stone. If I do that, Instagram Reels limits it to 30 seconds. And you think videos are more effective in general? Oh my goodness, yes. So posts with video, I don't have the exact statistic. Actually, yes, I do. Posts that contain video. Directly embedded, not shared. Yes. So um, let me share this with you here real quick. Social media posts with video have 48% more views than non-video posts. And 12,000% or 12, sorry, 1,200% more shares than text and image combined. Okay, so video is the way to go. Absolutely. Um, okay. Uh, and do, you, do you feel as if there's a generational break? Uh, sorry, a generational break between the thing. I think that's my opinion. But what would you say is a generational break? Sure. As far as having a ministry that's geared towards not just reaching young people, but reaching also older generations and everything in between. Definitely. What are your thoughts on that generational break? Do you see one? Sure. Sorry, there's more. And maybe this sort of talks to everybody else. Do you see one? Uh, platform maybe surpassing another platform. So 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 it it all depends. Right now, I mean, TikTok has exploded, and like people are on other social medias are like afraid of TikTok. It's intimidating them because it's blowing up so much. Um, TikTok. Um, let's see here, sixteen to twenty-four, or is that Instagram? A lot of people on TikTok are like 10, 11, 12 years old. Okay, TikTok. Um, Instagram is like, um, you know, just a little bit older than that. You know, maybe Instagram is like 18 to 30, 35, 18 to 35. Uh, and then Facebook is like the 35 and beyond, you know. Um, 
but all of those can be utilized. And you can do a post on TikTok and Instagram, and then you can share it to Facebook as well. Um, and YouTube, everybody's on YouTube. Um, so all of those are very good. And, and utilizing them for the different time frames, you know, if you want to do something more detailed, longer, and have it more polished, YouTube is the place to be um, for that. Okay, other questions? Yes. So I don't know if you guys are like me, but we can be like a perfectionist with our content, right, going out. Yeah. But like you've already said, what I found with what I do business-wise on TikTok, social media, just putting content out there and not really worrying about how polished or how good it is because especially with that algorithm, the more you put out there, that one or two, and you, you're always surprised, the one that you didn't think or put more time takes off. Oh, it's so true. So stop putting so much focus on it. It's got to be all perfect, dot the I's, cross the T's. Just put it out there. Yeah, yeah. And, and another thing that's going to do more than like polishing, okay, is you. If you come across as real and passionate, that is going to connect with people, okay? And if you're talking to them like you're talking to a friend on FaceTime, okay, that's what's going to make the difference. If you're in preacher mode, let me tell you about Jesus. Let me tell you what he did for you. People aren't going to, like, relate to that, okay? They want you to be like, hey, you know, I want to tell you something that will help you. And being in preacher mode doesn't relate well um, to those demographics. Yes? Two quick questions. Uh, do you recommend any cross-posting software like Buffer or any of those guys, or do you recommend like to embed the Sure. Like I've used um, some of those way in the past. I don't do that anymore. Um, sometimes I'll record it, okay? I'll post it to TikTok. I'll edit it in TikTok. And when you do that and you post it on TikTok, you can have a setting where it automatically saves that TikTok post to your phone as a new video with the text and everything that you put in there. So sometimes I'll do that, and then I'll post that to Instagram. And the second quick question you know, that's a good question. I'm not sure if I have an answer for that. It'll be different depending on your purpose and what you're trying to do. Um, I think for me, I would say probably a personal account would be more relatable, more approachable. Um, but that's, that may be wrong, but that's my perception. Okay. Would you say that? Potentially for TikTok, having that personal account would be more important just because it's, it's a, like a wide swath of people. Yeah. Oh, and another thing that I want to mention, okay, so like I'm 36. If I'm messaging somebody that's like 10, you know, I want to be very, very careful. Um, and a lot of these people are anonymous. I mean, they'll have like, you know, Naruto or something as their profile and their name will be like, I love chips, you know. And so... Um, when you get to the point where if somebody accepts Christ, I'll ask them, I'll, I'll, I'll say, if you would like, I can recommend a good church in your area if you wouldn't mind telling me your city, what city you're near. I don't ask for their address. I don't even ask for their, their real name, but I'll ask them what city they're near. And sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Okay. Boy, lots of questions. I'm going to have you guys take my prayer cards, okay, and we'll have a big discussion. Yes. Um, what about like if you share content that wasn't original necessarily you, but is not copyrighted? Yeah. So, for example, something like um, like from the Billy Graham Network or something yeah. like that. Um, well, does that help you, or does that hinder you, or, or what, what do you think? It's good for your posts to be consistent. If somebody, if, if, if you're posting stuff about this all the time, and then all of a sudden you have a different post. Now, I've done that once in a while, and it's been good. But if your posts are all over the place where people don't know what to expect, it's not going to be as much of a, I want to follow this person. Um, but I've done stuff like that before. Like I posted some stuff about Kent Hovind about like creationism versus evolution. Got a lot of people angry, but made a lot of discussion, made a lot of discussion. And atheists got on there and they were able to hear the gospel, even though they would reject it. Um, so that's been useful to me. Um, I do that, but like sparingly. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay, uh, real quick and then. Is there any way to um, figure out like within your local area what demographics are on what media? Because for instance, our area is a lot of, a lot of elderly people. Yeah. Not as many young people. Yeah. It's hard to tell if these are on platforms. Yeah, I'm not sure about Instagram, but I know on TikTok it's like they'll tell you what countries your followers are in, you know, but not, no, not so much like within your local region. 
So that's kind of a hard to answer question. I don't, I don't necessarily have the answer. I, I just want to encourage everyone to like look at social media ministry as like a team thing. Like you, uh, you might be the one person in charge of your social media accounts, but you should also be discipling people in your church to be preaching the gospel through their social media accounts. Amen. And also it's like you might have the main pass and password login for your church social media accounts, but you can also have other people helping you create content, whether that's image, whether that's text, whether that's video, and um, find like sir, find the demographics in your church on those platforms and help and like disciple them to reach people on the platforms that they use. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And also, even though those demographics are so young on TikTok, I mean, there's like the dancing grandpa, you know. There's people that are older that are on there. Okay, it's not like they're not on there. Um, it's just not as common. And I was just going to say, if you don't have time to do videos and stuff, uh, watch watch the people that you're following, that you're friends with, who say, hey, I'm going to the hospital this week, or hey, I'm struggling with something, I've got pressure. Reach out to them personally. With if You don't need a video to do that. Just reach out to them, offer a pray for them, find out how you can help them. Uh, and oftentimes, those lead to gospel conversations. Amen. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you go to our website, postingthegospel.com, the first thing that you'll see is our ministry video that explains all of this visually and in a more put-together fashion. Um, so that'll may maybe help answer some questions as well. Sorry, quick question. Go ahead. So if you tweet, you can uh, do view, I know we're not talking about Twitter, but you can view tweet activity and see uh, basically how many people have actually interacted, seen it. I'm not too familiar with Instagram and TikTok. Did you say you can also yes. see what... Even if they're not commenting, they're not, so you don't have a hard-line answer, comment, whatever. You can see who's viewing it, or at least who is reaching. Yeah, you can see how many views. For TikTok. Yes, you can see how many views that video has had. Um, and you can also see, like, over the past seven days, over the past 28 days, what your reach has been. And how many people have, like, viewed your profile because of that. Um, oh, one other thing. Okay, so, like, I have that YouTube video where I give the gospel thoroughly in 13 minutes from Genesis until the cross. Um, I have that as my link, okay? Because like Instagram and TikTok allow for a actual clickable link in your profile. I have that video in my profile. That's my clickable link, how to be saved. So like on TikTok, when I'm messaging people and they want to know how to be saved, I'll talk to them about accepting Jesus as their savior and I'll say, go to my profile Click the link, the YouTube link of how to be saved, and let me know after you've watched it. Get back to me after you've watched it. And if they don't, after like a day, I'll send another message to them, were you able to watch the video? And I'll follow up with that. Um, it's kind of like door-to-door -door asking somebody if they read the track that you talked to them about. What are your thoughts on Instagram stories, and how often do you utilize that? Yeah, so like that's part of my newbie-ness. Uh, so um, I've done a couple of stories, but really not really at all utilize that, um, stories and highlights and stuff like that. I haven't really gotten into that. The reason I ask is I have some friends that are more savvy in this than I am, and they say that the stories, they give way more viewership. Really? I know what your experience is. Okay. That. Yeah, I haven't, really, I haven't really experimented with those okay. really much at all. Do you have any input about stories? Um, use them, like, first of all, use what's natural to you and use what, like, Start with what you can do, like, naturally to you. And then second of all, it's like, um, use everything. Use all the tools that Instagram gives you. Yeah. It's like, um, stories reaches only people who follow the account, but Reels is really cool because it reaches everyone, people who aren't even following you. Yeah. Definitely. Yes. Kind of a two-part question. If you say you use local hashtags, mm -hmm. would you recommend using viral hashtags? Yes. So, like, also, on TikTok, if you go to the search, the search icon at the bottom... It shows what's trending right now. If you can use those, okay, I know some people that'll just use whatever, like, you know, fashion boutique or whatever for like a gospel video. I don't do that, okay? I try and find things that can organically fit in naturally to my video. Like, for instance, I had a post where I talked about my dog, you know. Um, just use object lessons. And if something lines up with a, what was the one? Uh, was it the Fortnite thing? So, okay, there was one, okay, I did, because I talked about how Fortnite skins have creators, you know? They design those skins. And you were created by God. You were designed by God. And it's absurd to think that you and I just kind of randomly 
appeared out of nothing. And God's purpose for you is that you would know him and have a relationship with him through Jesus. Um, there was a trending hashtag like pro gamer or something or other. I put that in there, okay? Because people like to go through the trending hashtags and it, your video might pop up. So that's, that's good to use as well. Yes? It's kind of cool. One right now that's trending. I just... I didn't know that feature on TikTok is a not a perfect person. Yeah, I've used that one a couple times as well. Yes. Definitely, definitely. And is there a, is there a recommended limit to how many hashtags? Yes, and I just found that out like last month. Okay, so you don't want to use every single bit of space in that TikTok 140 characters, whatever it is, to fit in as many hashtags as you can. Oh, okay. You want to do two hashtags. Well, okay, probably six would be the limit that I've heard you'd want to use, okay? Um, it was recommended to me to use two hashtags that are relevant to your post, whether or not they are viral, and then use two trending hashtags. Or use two trending hashtags and use, you know, two... I'm trying to think off the, off, off the fly, but... Boy, I can't remember what it was. But, yes, so you want to limit those... Um, for some reason, it tends, to, it tends to help. And with the timing thing, like, okay, the algorithms, the algorithms and stuff, they change. Like, near the end of 2020, I was like, TikTok is over. Because views that, I mean, ones that I was getting, like, you know, lots and lots and lots of views, now I was getting very, 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 very small. And I found out that the algorithm had changed to now supposedly, when you, when you post, matters. And I found out that like 12 a.m. on Thursday morning is like the golden hour. And so I did that. The very first time I did that, it blew up to like well over 100,000 views. And uh, prior to that, I was getting like 100, 200 views. Um, so I did it the next week, 12 a.m. at midnight. I'm like, this is going to be a good one just like last week. No way. It was like 50 views. Um, so um, don't get discouraged. Keep going. Keep going. And use YouTube. Look up stuff on YouTube for like how to, you know, understand the algorithm 2021 January. And you'll learn stuff from people that know what they're doing. Um, and just like Joe, I mean, like we've learned everything that we know from like YouTube tutorials uh, to find this stuff out. Awesome. Okay, yeah. I was going to add a resource. My wife is the social media manager at a church. Mm -hmm. And she said church-wise, we talked about personal. Okay, gotcha. She said church-wise, one of the churches that's killing it right now on TikTok is Craig Rochelle and my yeah. church. Yeah, yeah. So they're a great, uh, great platform to kind of yeah. steal ideas from. Yeah. Probably a good well, what's good, just like, I'm, I'm glad he brought that up, okay? Yeah, I know he does give What's good, if you look on Reels or you look on TikTok, Okay. Look up stuff for like what you want to do. Find somebody that's killing it and then duplicate the stuff that, 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 that's working, okay? Um, learn from them because I'm constantly learning. I'm constantly finding what, what I'm doing wrong uh, or, or what I didn't realize had changed. And so we got to keep on those things, definitely. Uh, following up on the resource, yeah. um, there's a group called Pro Church Tool. Yes. And they, I, Stuff. Is it um, Brady? Brady Shear. He's on TikTok. Okay, you should follow Brady Shear on TikTok. That Pro Church Tools because he has some great pointers, some very helpful stuff. Um, there's another guy, Alex Dion Wilson. Okay, um, I don't agree with everything he does, like like Joe. Um, you got to take the take the meat and leave the bones kind of thing. Uh, for some people that might not necessarily you agree with in different areas, but he has a video on YouTube. If you look up Alex Dion Wilson, TikTok um, advice, okay? And he talks about something being shareable, being original, being savable um, um, kind of stuff. Who's that again? Alex Dion Wilson. And uh, that's, a good, that's a good resource for you as well. It's getting eerily quiet out there. I don't know if, like, everybody's already in the auditorium or wherever they're going. I think maybe we're okay. Okay, yes? Uh, I've heard, so, uh, what I usually use on my Facebook and Instagram is a thing called Sunday Social. Okay. Uh, Sunday Social is where like, they have engaging posts and you can just like, what uh, Revive we had was like rank the best 
chicken places, and they had like 699 people interacting and stuff. So yeah. Sunday social was really good. Okay, Sunday social. Okay, awesome. Getting some good, getting some good resources here. And if it's something that's like silly, there's lots of silly stuff on TikTok. If you can find a way without forcing it to share the gospel through that thing, like I talked about the KFC logo, how his bow tie looks like he has arms and legs. Like if you can think of any way to share the gospel with something that's silly but trending, do it. Um, and God can use that. And you can use it for your church. You can use that wherever you are. Um, if you're a missionary evangelist to reach people with the gospel. And uh, I hope this has been a blessing to you. I'm just so thankful for each and every one of you being here. Um, the Idea Network has changed my life because it helped me through like two different very difficult transitions. Uh, so I'm thankful for them and I'm thankful for all of you being here and just humbled to be able to share this with you. So God bless you. I'm going to go ahead and pray and then, we'll, and then we'll be dismissed, all right? Thank you, Lord, so much for this group. Thank you for this opportunity to be able to talk about social media, sharing the gospel. I pray, Lord, that you'd help each and every one of these people, Lord, to, to, to share the Great Commission, to, to, to do the Great Commission uh, using the tools that you've put in our hands. I pray that you would bless them, Lord, bless their efforts. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks so much for listening to today's Idea Talks. If you would like to reach out to us, drop us an email at joshtice at ideanetwork.church. If you benefited from this podcast, we ask that you take a moment to show your support by subscribing, rating, and reviewing the podcast on iTunes. Thanks again for joining us, and we will see you right here again at the Idea Talks podcast.